planetary motions. Basically, er, almost everything has been predictable. The sun rises, the sun sets, the moon rises, the moon sets. The stars, you can even track those around by throughout the year. So they came up with this thing called the celestial sphere. And in it, the Earth is in the center. Okay. Everything else moves through what's called the zodiac, the sun and the stars. And this thing actually was able to predict the moon phases quite accurately. However, it couldn't predict everything. There were certain things that changed in brightness, in speed. Sometimes it would be fast, sometimes it would be slow. Position. It should go around us position, but it's not. Even the way it was moving was wrong. Sometimes it would move the correct way, which is called direct motion or eastward motion. But other times it would move the wrong way, which was retrograde motion or westward motion. And they weren't following a circle. Not good. So the Earth being in the center wasn't very helpful. These things they called wanderers because they couldn't explain them. And actually, if you look at the root word of planet, it comes from the word wanderer. That's why we call them planets. Now, there were five wanderers, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Saturn, and Jupiter. These wanderers, which turned out to be planets, they found out reflected the sunlight just like the moon did. Or does, I should say. And they also figured out that when they're closer to us, they look brighter. When they're further away, they look fainter. And some of them are even brightest during retrograde motion. Remember, retrograde means they're going backwards in the sky. So if you were an astronomer back in the day, you had to explain this. Not a very easy task. So Aristotle came around at about 300 BC. He was Greek. And he had the idea, the Earth is the center of the universe. Right, now remember back then, the universe was the Earth, the stars that we could see, and the five wanderers, the sun and the moon, and that was it. Right, so the Earth is the center. Everything moves around us. And he also said that they move around in a circle. Now, there's a whole big thing on why Aristotle likes circles. It sums up to the fact that he thinks they're perfect. Right? There's no beginning, there's no end. The shape of them, nothing's deformed, it's a perfect circle. Right? So, he thought they were perfect. Um, if you're really interested in this, there's a really good book called The History of Zero. And it actually starts with Aristotle. Well, it starts way before Aristotle, but there's a big section on Aristotle, and it's it's actually kind of interesting. It's not a long read either. Anyway, so what he did, which kind of is shown in that picture there, is everything that his model had pretty much could explain most things. Could explain the sun, could explain the moon, could explain the stars going around us. Right? But it couldn't explain these stars that are going backwards or changing in brightness. So, okay, how do we fix that? Well, you just add more circles. So now we've got the deferent, which is basically the orbit around the Earth. You've got the deferent. And then you have the epicycle. And the epicycle is just a little circle around the deferent. So as you can see, the planet would go around the deferent, and then it would go around these epicycles, where if it was going around the epicycle properly, it would come closer to Earth and further away from Earth. So it would change in brightness. 
it would also look like even still going around the deferent, it's moving backwards in the sky because of this epicycle it has to go around as well. So, more information, more circles. And all of these circles had to be constantly adjusted because as you're looking into the sky and seeing all these things, the circles needed to be adjusted. So what ended up happening is that the Earth was no longer the center of the universe. Now, it was such a small spot off of the center that most people didn't really care. It was like, yeah, okay, we're still the center of the universe. They still go around us, so therefore we're the center. And so um, Ptolemy came along about 50-ish years after Aristotle, and he said, okay, here, I've got it. Here's all, where all the circles are. Here's all the difference. Here's all the epicenters. This sucker ended up being over 80 circles, right? You're going to think astronomy is hard now. Yeah. Just for the five planets, it was 80 plus circles. That's ridiculous. Okay. Um, if you're interested, you can go back and click on that link, and it just kind of shows how one circle can get so complicated. But this complicated view was held for 13 centuries. That's 1,300 years people thought Earth is the center, and there's all these epicycles, and that explains everything. 